Good afternoon. I am uh, Steve Harmon from PTC. I'm a principal partner engineer, uh, and I'm here to show you an integration that we've done between the Salesforce IoT Cloud and ThingWorks. First, let's uh, level set a little bit. Who is PTC? Our mission at PTC is to bridge the physical and digital worlds. PTC started as a uh, company that uh, had expertise in CAD. Um, first project was Pro Engineer. Um, one of our bread and butter products now is Creo. If you've done mechanical engineering, it's a uh, CAD tool, uh, market leader. You see here the yin and yang symbol. We have uh, the physical world on top with a little bit of, of the uh, digital world inside it in the form of embedded software. We have the digital world on the bottom with a little hardware. The two parts make a whole. And that is reflected in our new logo. We have the physical on top and the uh, digital on the bottom there. We've made a large investment in the hardware side of this convergence. I work for a business unit called ThingWorks. Um, we've done a $700 million investment in uh, companies like Kepware, Industrial Connectivity, ThingWorks for uh, uh, application enablement, connectivity, IoT, uh, and Exita. And we have a 30-year heritage in the digital side as far as uh, product lifecycle management, uh, requirements management, uh, CAD, etc. We're uh, out of Needham, Mass, but uh, we have a global presence. And uh, we're the recognized leader in CAD, PLM, service, ALM, etc. ThingWorks is the tool with which we did the integration. So let's just level set about what ThingWorks is. It's a business unit of PTC. There are 800 plus of us dedicated solely to IoT. Um, we have uh, thousands of partners and uh, solutions. Uh, and like I said, we've made a huge investment in realizing this vision. Your typical IoT solution has uh, several requirements. And our solution goes across these four. The first thing you have to do with an IoT solution is connect those sensors to something. So we have a suite of connectivity tools. There are an unlimited number of uh, protocols out there. There are programmable logic controllers that can't take an executable. There are computers. There are uh, uh, existing solutions. Uh, in a nutshell, if you have a connectivity issue, we probably have a solution for it. Uh, we also have an application enablement tool in the uh, creation part of the um, uh, stack. Our platform allows you, through a drag and drop interface, to create HTML5, CSS, JavaScript applications that extract value out of that uh, IoT data. It's uh, very easy to make different views for different constituencies. We made a huge investment in a company called Coldlight. It's now branded as ThingWorks Machine Learning. Uh, it provides tools that can point at those huge data sets that you're creating uh, with your sensors. And without hiring a uh, team of data scientists, you can get insights on, uh, on, on that data. What machine has a probability of failure? What are your top three factors that contribute to a certain failure mode, et cetera? And then experience, probably the ex most exciting part. We uh, have invested in and purchased a company called Euphoria. If you've been over to our booth at the, uh, right in front of the IoT cabin, um, we have uh, tools that allow you to create augmented reality experiences using the engineering models that you create with our tools or anybody else. Um, imagine a world where a technician can put on HoloLens and walk up to a bulldozer, for example. As, as the technician looks at the bulldozer, a failing pump starts to uh, pulse orange. The technician touches the pump, and the Salesforce service ticket comes up. The technician touches the pump again, and it plays an animation of how to reassemble, uh, disassemble, and reassemble that pump. Uh, touches it again, and uh, instrumentation appears above that pump. So you can distribute knowledge into the field, and you're not reliant on three or four crusty old technicians uh, bringing uh, the rest of your uh, workforce through. 
And that, too, is a drag and drop tool that's built on top of our thing model. So let me talk a little bit about that. I'm not going to go through every little piece of this slide, but it just shows that we have a number of capabilities, including industrial connectivity with Kepware, uh, device management. Um, so we can send software updates to um, uh, a device. We can transfer files back and forth. We can give your service personnel the ability to connect to that machine in real time and service it. Uh, on the other side, we have our augmented reality capabilities. The thing that's important to developers is at the center of it all is our thing model, which generates its own API as you model your environment. This is what it would look like in our UI. Uh, a thing in our thing model has properties, services, which are uh, JavaScript snippets that uh, can um, perform actions, integrate with third-party systems, etc. cetera. Uh, we uh, can create events, like uh, data change events, so that whenever, say, temperature changes, we can take a certain action. And we have subscriptions so that you can watch an event and uh, take one or more actions based on, that, uh, based on that subscription. Once you've created your model once, you can instantiate many instances of that thing. And each thing gets its own copy of the properties, its own copy of the services, et cetera. What's important about this model is you don't have to design a database schema before you get started. You don't have to have a room full of engineers and business analysts talking past each other. You can talk about your problem domain in words that make sense for that problem domain. The thing that really excites me as a developer is as you work and build your thing model, the uh, ThingWorks platform generates an API as you work. So everything in ThingWorks is accessible via REST. Uh, if you have a third-party application that you want to integrate with ThingWorks, you can authenticate and call these services. You can see that we have, we have several gets, but there's a put there. You can actually change state of a device by just making a RESTful call. And uh, you, know, you can use Postman to uh, test this stuff. Uh, if you add a new property, it adds a new service for you. So maintaining that API is as easy as creating your thing model. The thing that really helps you get productive with the tool is our drag and drop UI builder we call Composer. We have widgets on one side that you just drag into a work area. You uh, uh, call your data services on the right and just bind those services to the widgets. And you build applications usually an order of magnitude faster than if you have to roll them by hand. If you don't have a deep bench, you can have uh, junior people do this very quickly. If you do have a deep bench of developers, it's straight HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript. So uh, you can uh, dig in and um, customize it to fit your solution. What's exciting about the thing model being at the center of everything is if you've been over to our booth, we have a uh, demo of the augmented reality um, capability that we have. It, the interface to design those augmented reality experiences is a drag and drop interface with the thing model at the center. So what looks incredibly complex is uh, very easy. Uh, that's just another advantage of that uh, thing model. What's the Salesforce IoT Cloud? This is going to be very brief, because the experts on that are right over there. But Salesforce has ruled out, uh, rolled out a new capability, Salesforce IoT Cloud, powered by Thunder, that uh, provides you a data ingestion point so that you can get machine data into your Salesforce instance. It has data transformation tools to meld your customer data with your device data. And then it has a stateful rules engine that, uh, that with which you can create some very complicated um, workflows. So basically, we have device data on one side and the customer profile on the other. And we integrate the two with the Salesforce IoT Cloud. How does it work? There's an ingestion point. Uh, our platform's down there dealing with the devices, providing you with the utilities that uh, are specific to devices. Salesforce uh, is, is up in the cloud um, with your customer data. And via real-time rules, um, we take actions based on things that your devices are doing. So what's the story I'm going to tell today with my demo? We want to show how you can use device data 
in conjunction with what you've already have in your investment in Salesforce to enable things like uh, the creation of service tickets when something bad happens to a machine. You can watch machines for heavy usage and uh, create a sales opportunity that goes right out to your sales force without any uh, manual intervention. Um, you can start people on a, um, a marketing journey based on something that, that, a, that a device does. You can uh, enable automatic reordering of uh, replenish, uh, replenish, uh, uh, replenishable uh, items with your machines. The, what, what we use to tell this story is a fictional company that leases MRI machines to uh, hospitals and MRI providers. On the ThingWorks side, we have the assets. Uh, these are a bunch of MRI machines all around the country, and we keep track of them with ThingWorks utilities. In the Salesforce org, we have the demographic information for, the, for, our, for our clients. Uh, this is a view of the ThingWorks asset manager. The important thing to notice is he, here is we have a combination of sensor data coming from ThingWorks and demographic data coming from Salesforce. You don't have to repeat yourself. You can use Salesforce as a system of record, keep the customer data over there where the customer tools are. The story is this. I'm not going to go through the whole diagram, but basically we're going to look for problems with the machine and create service tickets. We're going to look for heavy usage and create opportunities if we see heavy usage. And um, if we see a failure, we're going to get a, a technician right out on the, uh, right out on the um, site. So let's, let's get into the demo. Um, this has been pretty cantankerous with the network, conference networking, so let's hope for the best. This is the view of the ThingWorks Asset Manager. Uh, this is where the device data is coming in, and this is where you have the utilities that allow you to send software updates, uh, connect, etc. This is our uh, group of machines. I'm just going to quickly put them in a uh, in a uh, starting state so that we can induce some chaos and show you things happening over in ThingWorks. This is our Salesforce org. This is where our opportunities are going to end up. This is the IoT cloud. We have a data ingestion point that's very easy to use. Uh, network's a little slow today. All we have to do is define a data schema, more or less, give Salesforce a heads up on what kind of data we're sending, and we can just import some JSON that tells Salesforce what to expect. All we need to do is hit this HTTPS endpoint after authentication with some JSON, and the data is ingested into the IoT cloud. This is a view of the data flying by from the demo right now. There are several views of this data. This is what's exciting about the Salesforce IoT cloud. Really, the magic is in this orchestration. We have a collection of states, like the machine is in a normal state, the machine is in a helium low state, the machine is in a helium failure state, and associated with those states are rules. The reason it's important to associate rules with states is if you didn't, um, you'd have to have conditionals if the, if the if someone's maintaining the machine and the doors open and this and that and pretty soon the, the tree just expands exponentially. If you, if you group things by states, I'll use a simple naive example. Let's, let's use a vending machine. You send a temperature alarm if a machine starts to warm up or somebody opens the door. But what if a technician is there? The machine's going to warm up and the door will be open as a matter of course. You can use states to group one set of rules, like send an alert if the door gets opened in one state, and in a maintenance state, set, uh, send a different set of rules. So it helps you model complexity without, uh, without just a bewildering array of conditionals. A really important thing to notice about this uh, orchestration is it's not linear. There are a lot of workflow tools out there. Typically, you start at the beginning of a state. You go through some conditions and pop out the other side. Then somebody has to programmatically or 
uh, manually put the machine back in the start state. Not here. If you design this well, uh, a machine can bounce back and forth between a problem state to a normal state into a created a Salesforce case state uh, without your intervention. Uh, so you can extract way more value out of your Salesforce instance and uh, uh, enable some incredibly complex workflows with very little effort once you've designed it. So what's happening now is our machines are slowly counting down with their helium. Everybody's in a helium normal state right now. So I am going to induce some chaos. I'm going to grab this first machine and I'm going to fail the helium on it. I'll go ahead and uh, do that. I will uh, grab this second machine, and I'm going to take the helium low, because if the helium goes low on someone who's leasing an MRI machine, we think this person should have the wherewithal to keep that. We're going to go ahead and try and sell them a uh, service contract. And then there's a high temperature on this, this third machine, so I'm going to take the helium low once, and then take the helium low a second time, and that will meet the conditions that we have arbitrarily chosen for heavy use. So we're going to put that back on uh, an auto refresh and look at what's happening in the sales code. You can see that we've changed states. 25% of our machines are in he a helium low state. Uh, one of them is in a helium failure. And if we drag this bar, you can see that machines just go back and forth from state to state. So we're collecting our device data using ThingWorks. We have intelligence on the edge so that we don't just inundate Salesforce with messages like, I'm OK, I'm OK, I'm OK. And we're, we're using Salesforce to create uh, orchestrations, workflows that uh, extract a lot of value from that data. So what we've shown you today, ThingWorks are the experts on devices and getting that data and sending software updates, utilities, remote connectivity, uh, analytics, augmented reality. Salesforce are the experts on customers. We combine a stream of data from our devices with a stream of data about your customers and create rich experiences within Salesforce to extract more data. So that concludes what I have today. Um, I would invite you, invite you to come over to uh, our booth at the uh, IoT cabin, and we can really dig into the tools together. I'll show you how we can dra use a drag and drop interface to build an augmented reality experience. I'll show you how we can model a problem with uh, things. And uh, we can dig deeper into uh, the uh, uh, Salesforce IoT Cloud. I'd also encourage you, if you haven't gone, to go dig deep with the Salesforce IoT Cloud from Salesforce. So uh, thank you for your time today.